Hey, good morning, and welcome to the Europatient Podcast. I'm your host, Vic Sinise. We meet every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And if you're watching us live, we're on YouTube and Facebook Live every week. And you can always watch our on-demand by going to our europatient.com website, where you'll find all of our past episodes. Also, the best place to go to get any of our handouts, we've got a bunch of them, so go and check those out. Every program I put out, I have a handout with valuable information for you guys. So let's get started with our show this week. So I hope you liked last week's episode about kidney stones. And as I promised, this week we're going to talk about that procedure called S-Wall or extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So let's get going on it. So S-Wall is a non-invasive procedure used to treat kidney stones. I'm going to cover what it is, how it works, and its benefits, and what to expect before, during, and after treatment. So let's start by understanding kidney stones and why they need to be treated. So kidney stones are like tiny pebbles. We talked about that before. They form in your kidneys. They can range from small and easy to pass to large and causing significant discomfort. So S-Wall is an option for treating stones that are too large or painful to pass naturally. Now it stands for extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. And when you're saying extracorporeal, what we're really talking about is outside the body. So that means that there's no cuts, no incisions. You know, in the old days, we didn't have those options. This one is completely done without any cutting. I'm going to show some examples of that. Um, but the shockwaves pass through your skin and target the stone, breaking it into small pieces that you can pass naturally. So using advanced imaging systems like ultrasound and x-rays, your healthcare, key, your, bleh, your healthcare team pinpoints the exact location of the stone. The shockwaves then focus on the stone, breaking it apart and without damaging any of the surrounding tissues. Over a few weeks, your body naturally passes these fragments. So S-Wall works best for medium-sized stones in a specific area of the urinary tract. It's not ideal for everyone, like patients with bleeding disorders, pregnancy, or certain anatomical problems. Your doctor can assess if this is an option for you. So let's get over and kind of talk a little bit about what this looks like. So this is the machine as you're looking at right now. And this thing up here, that's the x-ray head. And that's taking the x-rays to kind of guide where the shock waves are going to be. And this thing here, this is the shock generator. And see, there's no placing anything over you. You know, in the old days, this was done in what we call a, a bathtub. I was trying to find some pictures. It's so old that nobody uses it anymore. But you used to have to get in a bathing suit and get in a tub of water because the shocks go through water. They transfer through water, and they're focused on the kidney stone. Your body, being mostly water, is able to let the, them pass right through till it hits the stone. So let's show you a little different picture of what that uh, shockwave system looks like. That's the, um, again, that's filled with water. It used to be, as I said, a, a tub bath, but you can just use this pad here to put that on the patient and send it the, right directly through. And it makes a, a what they call an acoustical coupling, meaning basically we put a bunch of gel so it goes right through the, and no air spaces. Now, this is a good picture. It shows how that is focused on the stone. Those are the waves coming in, those, um, that, that break up the stone and their peak energy is released on the stone. That's why it's focused to hit it. And then as you can see in the second example over on the right, that's what the stones look like when they're all broken up, just little fragments. So you take a hard, big stone that will never pass and you transfer it into like sand-like particles that easily pass. And I've even got a little video here that'll explain that for you. So we kind of see that's uh, again, the sound waves focused to hit the kidney and the, mostly on the stone and it fractures it into those small pieces, just like that. Now, after the procedure, it's not unusual of discomfort, flank pain, bruising, nausea, and vomiting. That bruising can be sometimes like a, a little black and blue mark where they're transferred through the stones. I mean, through the body, through the skin. The risk, you may need a second procedure. It doesn't always work. The other risk that you have to be concerned about is, and they're small, about a 0.1% risk of serious bleeding. And when we say, you know, bleeding, it sometimes requires a blood transfusion. So um, there's about a one in a hundred risk that you would need that second procedure, such as a stent or ureteroscopy. We talked about some of those things before, about a 1% risk that you would have severe pain that could require medical attention. 
again, I'll explain a little bit about why that pain occurs. Small risk, you could get sepsis, which is a serious infection. So let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of explain what I was talking to you about. So imagine if you were pouring uh, rocks into a funnel. If you poured them really, really fast, the funnel gets blocked. And that's how it works with the stones. So what happens is as you're breaking these things into sand, now that sand, if it comes down nice and smooth and, you know, a couple stones at a time, fragments at a time, no problem. But sometimes the stone material starts coming down really, really fast. And if it's too fast, it can actually block up because your kidneys are like a funnel. As it goes out of the kidney into the ureter, it gets much smaller. So the big part of the funnel is what you see where it's dumping. So as it starts to get in there, if it blocks that ureter, you're going to be in severe pain, just like a kidney stone. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Now, s -Wall does offer many benefits over invasive procedures. Most patients go home the same day, can resume normal activities probably the next day. And for the right stones, it's very effective treatment with minimal downtime. PrEP is simple but important. Your doctor will guide you with imaging studies that you need, what tests you're going to need, and medications to stop beforehand. One of the big ones is you can't be on blood thinners. So you have to be able to stop blood thinners. Um, you may need uh, to fast before this because we do use an anesthesia, so they'll let you know about that. Now you're gonna, the way it's done during the procedure is you're gonna lie on a table and the shockwave generators I showed earlier will be positioned against your back or abdomen. You won't feel much beyond some slight tapping or vibrations and the entire session generally takes less than an hour, after which you just go home. After s -well, you might notice some soreness similar to a bruise um, and your urine might appear slightly pink. So you are beating up on the kidney a little bit. So it is sometimes normal to see a little bit of blood. They're normal and temporary. Drinking lots of water will help flush those stone fragments out, and your doctor will schedule a follow-up visit to see how well it's done that. So s -Wall is safe, but like any medical procedure, it has potential risk. Most are mild and resolve on their own. Rarely, fragments may not fully pass, as we talked about that funnel, or additional treatments might be needed. Your doctor will monitor and recover closely. Uh, for the majority of patients with appropriate stone sizes and locations, s -Wall is highly effective and patients often report significant relief from symptoms and a quick recovery time. So there you have it, folks. That's all there is to, that's all there is to kidney stones. Shock them, cut them out, go in there and get them with a scope. We've kind of discussed all these things. Again, I'll have some instructions and some information on the handouts on europatient.com. Uh, um, website, but I uh, hope that was interesting. So I've been, uh, I've watched many patients have s -Wall. Actually, we used to have a center that we'd go to an outpatient center, but we even bring the machines into our office now and do it right there in our office. So if you have a big enough uh, office to have those things come in, they are portable now. So very interesting. So all sorts of ways to get the kidney stones treated. Hey, join us next week for more on europatient.com.